Hi, uh, in this uh, module on surface preparation and protective treatments, uh, this is the second lecture and in which uh, we will actually look at uh, the anti corrosive or zinc coating and also look at sacrificial anode cathodic protection or in short uh, it is SACP, sacrificial anode cathodic protection. And let us see <coughs> before getting into that what are the various treatments available to protect the steel reinforcement uh, in uh, steel reinforcement which is embedded in concrete. And so, this is these are the three general category you can see alkaline slurry protection and then cathodic prevention and protection. If you are talking about cathodic protection technique uh, on a steel on a in, if you are talking about protecting the steel before the steel starts corroding then we call it cathodic prevention and if we are applying the same technique uh, to protect a steel which is already started corroded then we call it cathodic protection that is the difference between the uh, two cathodic prevention and cathodic protection and then we have a third category which is electrical insulation of the uh, reinforcement. So, in this uh, electrical insulation of the reinforcement we already covered that in our module on met, uh, coated reinforcement especially the non metallic coating where we talked about fusion bonded epoxy coated uh, rebars in uh, earlier lecture. Now, today we will focus on this first two which is uh, alkaline slurry protection and cathodic prevention and cathodic protection. So, in the alkaline slurry uh, protection what is the main idea is this alkaline slurry which is applied onto the rebar it provides an alkaline environment of course uh, and hence protects the uh, or gives uh, you know more protective environment to the uh, steel. In the cathodic prevention and protection case there are three major types which we are going to discuss today is first is a zinc, a zinc coating is directly applied to the rebar surface or directly applied onto the steel reinforcement which is this case here. So, you can see here the uh, um, yellowish uh, color it is indicating that and then uh, in the second uh, type is where zinc is applied to the concrete surface or a coating of zinc is applied. Uh, to the concrete surface which uh, sacrifices itself to protect the uh, steel and that coating is actually connected electrically connected to the steel reinforcement. We will uh, show you the more details later and then a third category in which we can uh, a sacrificial anode category is where an anode is connected a more typically a zinc anode is connected to the bar with uh, an impress current applied that is one case and also you can see here or it can be either an impress current technique or a sacrificial anode technique. So, uh, in this lecture we are going to focus more on the sacrificial anode connected to the bar this is what we are going to uh, focus the impress current technique we will talk about that in the next lecture. So, today we are going to cover uh, only this uh, sacrificial anode technique. Now, alkaline slurry coating this is a typical uh, you know way by which it is applied you can see the pictures at the bottom where a powder is mixed with the uh, you know uh, cement slurry where the you get at the end a very highly alkaline but cementitious also in nature and then that is applied uh, onto the rebar surface which provides an alkaline environment and also a mechanical barrier and at the same time uh, provides I mean in the which way it provides very good resistance against uh, corrosion. Uh, and this is an example bridge on the top right what you are seeing is it is a pile uh, you know construction for a coastal bridge where this kind of coatings were applied uh, and however make uh, please note that in this coating it is not adequately applied. So, that is why I put this picture here. So, when you talk about these coatings if they are not applied properly then you do not get a right uh, you know uh, protection you do not get very good protection rather it adversely affects the performance of the steel. So, whenever we talk about coating 
it is always better to provide a good coating uh, and protect the coating from scratching etc. and at the same time when you apply the coating you should apply it continuously on the steel surface otherwise they uh, tend to give uh, negative results or in other words it uh, reduces the uh, or it makes the steel more vulnerable to uh, corrosion. And anti corrosive coating is another category where uh, again typically they are also you know rich in uh, zinc and basically because of that they have electrochemical action and then uh, typically used for rebars in the existing structures. Typically when the st steel has already started exhibiting some corrosion we clean the steel uh, we clean the uh, rust uh, from the steel and then protect uh, cover or coat the steel uh, cleaned steel with anti corrosive agent this is a typical application as you can see on the picture on the left side a structure where there was heavy corrosion and then you can see this grey color uh, coating applied on to the uh, corroded steel rebar and on the right side also you can see it is up being applied on to the uh, corroded uh, steel rebar but after cleaning the loose rust and it essentially provides a localized uh, cathodic protection because because there is zinc which is uh, typically there are zinc which is present in the entire um, you know chemical or the coating now how do they really work i mean we'll see on this uh, inorganic zinc rich paints or coatings are available and one point to note here these are not like the galvanized steel where we go for hot dip in this case it's a cold galvanization in other words the temperature you are directly applying this on to a, a steel which is kept at an ambient temperature not very high temperature like in the case of hot dip galvanization. So, this cold galvanizing is what is being done and the material typically contains metallic zinc in the dry film okay. and then zinc dust this uh, spherical or lamellar shape that is how this uh, zinc dust uh, you know the particle shape and the chemical nature of the binder and the zinc particle determines how efficient uh, this will be and uh, so you can see on the picture on the right side where you look at the picture on the right side and then also look at these equations. So, as you can see in presence of oxygen and moisture you know you have this uh, oxygen reduction reaction happening and the zinc uh, you know the metallic zinc gets oxidized and then it becomes zinc 2 plus and releasing 2 electrons as you can see here metallic zinc here in presence of oxygen and H2O and then what eventually happens is you can see zinc ZnO is formed especially on the surface of the steel or near the uh, steel surface. So, you can see here in this reaction you can see the final product is zinc oxide and that uh, you know gives this good protection uh, for the uh, steel and uh, there is also one more uh, you know special type of uh, primers available which which is actually zinc uh, which is present in a silicate uh, based uh, matrix or glassy silicate matrix and in which this also provides very uh, you know superior galvanic uh, corrosion protection um, and uh, very because of the superiority it is very good for coastal environment where the demand for or in other words there the corrosion rate expected corrosion rate is typically high. So, in such cases because mainly because of chloride. So, in such cases you will need uh, you know high performing uh, you know this uh, coatings. So, this is one type of such coating and in the mechanism wise you can see here uh, you can see here on the left side the two red arrows which are going down that indicate the ingress of the uh, different chemicals from the environment and you can also see a lot of cracks in that region and which are actually filled by zinc 2 plus or you know oxidized zinc ions and then uh, that uh, kind of provides the uh, protection uh, from the uh, from corrosion okay so that they get trapped zinc hydroxy carbonates are formed and uh, or they are trapped inside the layer and which provides this galvanic uh, protection now uh, when we whenever we talk about any of these coatings 
one important thing to remember is that this coating is meant for steel and not for the concrete. So, here you can see on the picture on the top left there is a grey color coating which is also applied or accidentally applied onto the concrete surface. Now, imagine how you will get a good bond in this region where the concrete also is uh, covered or coated with the uh, this primer. So, it is not a good idea to uh, you know apply and also the, this picture here I mean uh, there is I mean this picture is like very you can see that that steel is almost corroded completely lost probably that it is better to provide a new rebar in that case or replace with a new rebar rather than trying to uh, you know spend money on this coating and applying on that and all the workmanship efforts required to do this job. Instead the best thing is to prevent uh, to provide remove that steel and probably provide a, because that steel is almost uh, corroded nothing is left. So, in such cases the engineer should take a more judicious uh, you know more uh, you know better judgment take better judgment so that uh, you know we do not waste money by just applying chemicals left and right. Uh, so, that is something which is very important to note like you know whenever we talk about these chemicals you have to also see where you want to apply them is it really beneficial uh, to do so or is there a de de you know better way of uh, doing things. And also here you can see in this picture a uh, lot of this yellow color coating is applied even on the uh, steel uh, even on the uh, uh, concrete adjacent to the steel rebar. So, that is something which we do not want uh, to do. So, and also if you think about the amount of chemical used or wasted by being applied on to the concrete surface you can just imagine how much is the surface area of the steel and what is the surface area of the surrounding concrete on which this uh, coating is applied it is just mere waste. So, we have to how do we do this I would say give the workman a very small brush which is having a diameter exactly like that of the rebar that will solve the purpose. So, do not give a large brush, but these are this typical you know simple uh, ways by which we can uh, uh, ensure that the work is done in a right way. And also tell them that you know they do not waste this by applying onto the concrete, uh, it is only meant for a steel. And if it is if they if the workers realize that the applica applying this coating onto the concrete surface will actually create more damage or you know create more problem then I think most of the workers will not do it they will be more careful. But in most cases they are not aware of the adverse effect and that is why uh, you know these kind of things happen. But we must stop it by educating more and more people. So, I would say whenever we do this you know you tell spend some time in the beginning uh, I am requesting all the engineers to spend some time in the beginning to uh, educate the uh, skilled labor or working uh, personnel that is very important but we sometimes do not do it. Now, on the right side is a good practice where you can see only the reinforcement is uh, you know the only the reinforcement is uh, having the coating and not the uh, concrete around it. So, this is how it should be done this is a very good uh, practice and not not the one on the left side. Okay. Now, uh, when we talk about conventional repair these are some uh, you know, top bottom left you can see a rebar which I mean which is heavily corroded. So, what we will do we will actually usually clean this rebar apply some coating and then patch it up uh, provide this patch repair. So, what happens in this uh, typical patch repair is uh, the hidden corrosion still continues to happen and we call it something called halo effect. I am going to explain what that halo effect is. As you see on the picture on the right side bottom right you can see this region has uh, you know the concrete. So, the uh, center portion of the image shows the the new repair material which is good quality concrete or new concrete noted here as localized repair and the concrete around it it is still having some carbon dioxide or carbonated concrete or it has some chlorides in it. Okay. So, in such cases there is a battery generated between the uh, and the steel rebar goes through the two concretes you know here you can see 
goes through the old concrete and the new concrete. Now, so point is when the same steel rebar goes through the old and new concrete which has different chemistry or the pH environment is different, chemical environment in general is different, then it automatically creates a battery or a corrosion cell at that interface and which leads to the formation of anode here and the cathode here. Okay. So, this battery is formed right across the, uh, the interface between the old and new concrete or the substrate and the repair concrete. So, how do we avoid this corrosion from happening, this corrosion which is occurring in the old concrete after the repair. This happens in couple of years you will most often you will see that this corrosion happens which we call halo effect and this leads to a frequent repair or nth time. I would mention here in one of the international conferences people were even discussing about changing the name of the conference to international conference on uh, you know concrete repair rehabilitation to the power n. So, this is uh, jokingly, but it is something very serious because we are repairing and we are going again and again and repairing the same portion of the structure because we are not doing a durable repair or we are not thinking about what will happen after the repair is done whether it is going to be really long lasting or not. So, in such cases what do we do? Yeah, in this slide uh, we are showing a uh, sacrificial anode cathodic protection system or SACP uh, the first generation uh, you know of that technique uh, where you can see a, a zinc coating is applied on the concrete surface with a, which is having a rebar embedded and then there is a connection between the uh, steel rebar and the zinc coating. So, which is also very important to for the system to uh, function. So, it is not like just applying a coating in the case of a rebar when you apply a zinc coating onto the steel rebar directly there is an automatic or already there is an electrical connection, but in this case when you apply the coating zinc coating on the concrete surface then you have to actually connect that coating material to the uh, steel rebar an electrical connection is required. And this type of system used to work very well for low cover and low resistive concretes, which are the type of concrete which were used uh, probably couple of decades earlier. So, in such cases it used to work very well, then even I will show you some examples also. The, so, this is an example where you can see uh, such coating applied when the cover concrete was relatively less uh, and the concrete was also relatively porous uh, in nature and you can see the thickness of the coating applied in this particular case this is a bridge column uh, is uh, about 400 micron thick and uh, you can see uh, this is this I got this picture from uh, Dr. Sergi uh, of vector corrosion technologies and uh, you can see uh, that uh, another example here again this is a bridge in Paris and one another bridge in Texas you can see significant cracking on this girder here and here also there are a lot of cracking on this girder and then which were uh, you know addressed uh, or the uh, corrosion was arrested by applying zinc coating which is electrically then connected to the uh, rebar inside steel reinforcement inside. Now, the positive thing about this technique is that that does not really create much of disturbance to the traffic. You can apply this you know even overnight and then get the job done and then long term protection is provided. But when the cover depth increases or when you when the resistivity of the concrete increases then this technique does not work very well. So, I have shown that in the red text in this yellow box. So, when you have a larger cover or a highly resistive concrete then this may not be really uh, a good technique uh, to go for. So, in such cases uh, we actually uh, borrowed some ideas which are which were already in practice uh, in other fields. So, this is one example where a uh, sacrificial anode system uh, is used for protecting buried pipelines where you have an anode system which is electrically connected to the underground pipe and it is uh, you know uh, depending on the resistivity of the soil uh, you can really protect this uh, buried I mean uh, pipelines 
And another area where the sacrificial anodes are widely used is uh, you know ocean or offshore structures where uh, you can see in this particular example which is a riser uh, of an offshore platform you can see all these are the anodes which are connected and how the electrical circuit is completed in this case is because these structures are immersed into the sea water. So, the sea water itself provides the uh, you know uh, helps in continue completing the electrical circuit. So, that is why you will see that in concrete structures we have to have the circuit completed. So, we cannot put an anode on the surface of the concrete and expect it to perform it is not going to work very well. You have to have actually embed the anode or it should be in contact completely in contact with the uh, you know the concrete. Uh, so, that the electrical circuit is uh, provide uh, is uh, completed, uh, because I have seen examples where anodes are just connected to the concrete surface and the actually anode is staying in air, which is not a good practice, it will not at all function, it will not function. So, we have to actually embed the anodes when you talk about concrete structures like you see here, you can see on the picture on the bottom right, there are rebars and then the concrete cover is removed and then anodes are embedded inside uh, you know um, and bottom right image also shows the same thing and this is how it is connected. So, you can see a typical uh, you know anode system where you have a zinc disc at the center and which is covered by a encapsulating mortar which is not just cement uh, you know um, just see because why I am saying this is there are a lot of anodes available in the market which are just uh, some cement packed around the uh, zinc disc it does not work and uh, why it does not work I will cover later, but you have to really think about uh, these are you know uh, not just a zinc plate connected to a tie wire and then uh, put it in mortar that is not how it is. So, this uh, the encapsulating mortar has to have an active cementitious matrix what it means is that the zinc element needs a pH of about 13 plus 13 plus pH should be greater than 13 let me just a pH of zinc should if the pH is greater than 13 then uh, zinc corrodes. Okay. So, for the zinc anode to corrode you should ensure that the surrounding material is having a very high pH for the entire life of the structure. If you are designing this repair for let us say 20 or 25 years for that entire period the zinc has to have high pH around it otherwise zinc will not corrode and it the system will not function. And also this tie wire should not corrode because we have also seen cases where uh, tie wire uh, gets corroded and it gets disconnected from the zinc anode then also the system does not work. So, it is and, at the, and one more thing is when you talk about the zinc corrosion it also have some expansive property not like the steel, but little bit and then that uh, uh, the and this encapsulating mortar should have sufficient air voids or void space to accommodate to all the zinc when it corrodes. So, so that it does not crack and creates other problems. So, these are all considered while designing a good uh, quality uh, sacrificial anode system, but uh, unfortunately in the market there are many things uh, many anodes which are of poor quality and one should be very careful while choosing these anodes uh, otherwise you will be spending a lot of money and then you would not get the uh, return. Now, what are the advantages of this there is no need for external applied current because it is you are putting a zinc into the concrete and then expecting that zinc to react as and when it is uh, based on the demand based on the corrosion current or based on the environment. If it is a more uh, let us say you have a same system during the rainy season may be because of the mo high moisture condition uh, you will have a higher demand okay, while in a dry. So, the same concrete during summer the demand will be less, but the good thing about this sacrificial anode system is they will supply the current based on what is the demand from the steel and hence protecting the steel from further corrosion. Okay. 
uh, which does not really happen when you do not have this kind of systems and so if you are just covering up with patch material it does not really give you long life, but with the sacrificial anode systems you can really get uh, or extend the life by about 20-25 years and uh, at that time we can also replace let us say you uh, the system consumes the entire anode in about 25 years you can at that time know exactly where the anodes are placed and you can take it and then put new anodes replace without really damaging the entire structure. So, we really can extend the life of the concrete structure significantly and uh, so self regulating I have already explained and minimal monitoring see once it is connected and in the beginning it is ensured then maybe every 5 years or something you have to go back and just check whether it is functioning or not. And one negative thing about is you know once you install these anodes, so they you cannot really increase the demand which is a good thing in case of ICCP system or impressed current system where if you have much higher corrosion uh, you know happening that or you know much higher demand for current output from these anodes. In the case of ICCP system which I am going to discuss in the next lecture where you have a control on how much current you can apply, but in this you do not have a control. So, if you have if you end up in something like that you add more anodes that is that is the only option uh, at that time, but that is not something which is very bad because uh, you can always design uh, for uh, what is based on the uh, current demand. Now, how this works? So, until I told you know in generally what is the benefit of doing using these anodes. So, how they work? So, you can see on the top right in this image you have a chloride free patch or the new concrete okay. and so reinforcement uh, you know is was actually corroding. So, when you put this chloride free patch the reinforcement in this region is now in exposed to a good quality concrete. So, it does not corrode, but the reinforcement over here which is now in the old concrete it because of the halo effect which we discussed earlier this region will tend to corrode and that is why it is showing minus 350 millivolt on the con of steel in the left side which is chloride contaminated concrete. Now, when you connect this anode to the steel what happens is the steel potential changes to uh, you know what happens is the steel potential changes and then uh, you, you can see that the uh, potential of the corroding zinc is minus 1100 millivolt. So, uh, now the there is a flow of electron from the zinc to the steel and so the uh, uh, steel is protected and the zinc is corroding and then essentially you have more positive potential for the steel and then we can say the steel is actually much uh, is protected because of the electrical connection to the uh, zinc. So, that is something and one more thing to uh, which is very very important here is uh, if you put a potential measurement unit uh, like any uh, copper copper sulphate electrode or any of so those electrodes which we typically use for half cell potential measurement. If you put those um, you know instruments on this the measure the potential which you are measuring is not the potential of the steel, but it is the mixed potential of the steel zinc connected system. So, we should not adopt this ASTM C876 criteria of uh, minus 350 millivolt uh, or minus 250 millivolt that criteria which we discussed in an earlier uh, slide or earlier lecture that criteria cannot be adopted. So, uh, all this uh, you know if you adopt it you are actually uh, not really measuring what you want to measure because that criteria is the ASTM C876 criteria is meant for the steel potential, but when you put uh, when you measure the potential of a system Reba system where uh, the galvanic anodes are also connected you are measuring the mixed potential of both the steel and zinc and not the potential of only the steel. Hence, the criteria given in ASTM C 876 cannot be applied to the uh, you know galvanically protected reinforced concrete system. 
it is very important to tell this because many places people still adopt that and which is and then they say that is minus more the more negative than minus 350. So, system is uh, corroding, but it is not uh, true. Okay. Now, what are the design parameters when you talk about uh, sacrificial anodes? We need to know what is the resistivity of the concrete. So, if you have a higher resist highly resistive concrete, maybe you will need uh, more anodes because uh, you know the uh, the current which is uh, supplied by the anode has to pass through this uh, concrete to reach the uh, steel. So, that is also something the ionic current I am talking. So, the resistivity of the uh, concrete is very very important. Steel density how much steel uh, is there. So, if for one anode or one anode uh, can protect a particular area or surface area of the steel and in this vicinity if you have more steel then you will need more anode to protect that steel provided the corrosion rate uh, is uh, similar. Um, and then exposure condition, so the more the chloride the more the contamination the more is the current demand that means the more is the amount of anode required. When I say amount of anode it is also important to think about the surface area of the anode, it is not just the mass, but surface area of the anode. So, you can see here uh, on the picture at the bottom where uh, 1, 2, 3, about 6 discs, 1 to 6 uh, discs of zinc uh, is placed, they are all connected together, and so that has more, uh, you know, uh, more surface area uh, to supply sufficient electrons to the steel reinforcement nearby. This picture over here shows an example where there you can see here small holes are drilled and these anodes are all getting connected in series. You can see there is a little red wire which goes and which are all connecting all the anodes and then these anodes are embedded into these drilled holes and protect the reinforcement in the uh, vicinity. Now, these are some different types of anodes available. Uh, it comes in various shapes, uh, but the point here main thing to note I mean I just want to say here is that they, these are the original type where uh, they embed the anode and uh, you can actually reach as close as possible to the steel rebar. That is the idea of giving or coming up with these embedded uh, type anodes rather than an anode which is applied on the surface. So, typically when we talk about the impress current technique then we put the anode on the surface of the concrete that is how usually it is done but there may be specific cases, but in general. And in the case of sacrificial anode systems, these anodes are embedded into the concrete and then covered. So, that after the work is over people would not even know that there is some type of repair uh, being done or some kind of electrochemical activity is happening. But in the case of impress current you will see this. Uh, you know boxes where uh, the you know rectifiers were uh, and then uh, where the current is being uh, controlled and which need to be protected from vandalism etc. Uh, so, in case of galvanic anode protection system or sacrificial anode protection system you do not have to worry about this vandalism uh, you know that which is very very important. So, in considering the geographical location or how the uh, you know people behavior is. So, and this on the left side you can see some of these discrete anodes which can be uh, which can be installed in drilled holes uh, at various locations in the concrete structure. On the right side you can see distributed anodes which are connected or to the rebar and then kept parallel to the rebar and this works very well when you talk about coated rebar system because it is it is something uh, where you do not know where the uh, damage is and then so and when wherever there is a damage you have to protect them. So, you can see that that kind of system also uh, uh, works very well this long anode uh, it is not strip, but it is like a long piece which can be uh, installed and uh, the structure can be protected for long term. Now, some tip for it is very important because if the anode see most often when you have any new technology. Uh, the technology gets killed if the application or implementation is not done properly. So, it is very important to know how that system works, what are the essential things for that system to work and are we actually doing all that uh, while installing, but if you do not do all that then we cannot blame 
the system or the technology, but you have to only blame the workmanship. So, here is something which is very important when you talk about these anodes. So, you have to really connect these anodes if the tie wire which comes out of the anode, you have to really make sure that it is tied very well. And as you see on this photograph here, uh, photograph on the top left, I just marked that it is very well tied. Now, imagine you have this rebar which is heavily corroded, imagine a case okay? and you tight it very well, but rust is an insulator. Okay? So, you have to wherever you tie the anode must ensure that rust is removed, okay? this rust must be removed because rust is a insulator, rust must be removed. Okay. And then we will check the electrical connection, I will show that in the next slide. Uh, so, this is how an anode is connected. So, you have to tie this very well, tie around and tighten it uh, very nicely and then you can see how it is connected over here. So, tightening is very, very important. So, the tie wire should be electrically connected to the rebar and then there should not be any possibility of the uh, the repair material getting in between. See, if you do not tie them very tightly, what will happen is when you place the repair material, they can actually get into the space between the tie wire and the steel rebar and then you lose the electrical connection. So, that is not something which is favorable. So, you have to really tie them very well. Now, so the just a tip on loop the first anode tie wire, twist and tighten using hook and then bend the twisted wires against the reinforcing steel. My student made this nice uh, drawing sketch here, very good. Uh, so, this is something which is uh, very important when we talk about uh, galvanic uh, anodes and their insulation. This is a poor practice, we must avoid this. Okay. So, we must go for very tight good electrical connection. So, as you can see here, there is an anode hanging from the beam uh, where it was installed recently. Uh, I only took this picture. So, you can see that uh, it is not a good practice and then we enforce that this is not, uh, really uh, you know tied it very well. Otherwise, eventually what will happen is after few years the uh, this anode is not working. So, they will come back and tell that the cathodic protection technology itself is bad, but it what is bad is not the technology, but the way it is implemented. So, tying of the anode to the uh, reinforcement and getting a very good electrical connection is important. So, you have to wherever you tie, you have to remove the, con uh, the rust from the uh, steel surface. This is another example you can see here is very loosely tied. Okay. This also must be avoided very loosely tied. So, I earlier I was telling the uh, concrete can or the repair material can get into the uh, you know space between the tie bar as you see here this circle I mean right here if you see, you can see that there is some space between the tie wire, you have to look very closely to the image, there is some space between the tie wire and the uh, corroded rebar okay? and the rebar also is uh, full of rust. So, even uh, in this case unless you really remove the rust where the tie wire is, you will not get proper electrical connection. And then the anode will not work, the steel will continue to corrode and then after few years you say that anode is not working, that is not right. So, it is the implementation is very, very important and crucial how good the quality of implementation uh, is. Okay. Here is another example where uh, this is a picture from a bridge structure. Okay. Now, they expect this anode to function, how is it going to function? There is no electrical circuit completed the electrical circuit is not complete. So, eventually what happened you see that all the tie wires are corroded, it is this zinc which is inside this circular disc is not helping in protecting the uh, system below. So, this is not how an anode should be connected, you have to ensure that the electrical circuit is very good. So, understanding how a system works and then only we should apply. So, in this cases it is very clear that the engineer did not understand uh, or even the uh, understand the mechanism or even the uh, the uh, people at site or even the uh, suppliers you know the anode supply they should ensure that it is uh, you know installed properly otherwise uh, the system is going to uh, not going to work and eventually we will all blame the uh, technology. But 
you know, these kind of things should not be practiced and let me just make it very clear and cross so that uh, we, we do not uh, you know it is these are all very bad practices. Okay. Now, how do we check that the an anode will actually work? So, first thing is checking the electrical connectivity. So, you can refer this uh, ISO standard 12696 between every rebar okay, as you see in this picture here this person is connecting the one probe of the multimeter here and the other probe of the multimeter is connected to the transverse bar and the or uh, so two rebars and you see whether the connectivity is very good or not. And between the rebar and the anode connections also. Okay. So, you can see here on the bottom picture he is connecting one terminal to the rebar and the other terminal is connected to the tie wire which is coming out of the anode. So, and if the you see that the resistivity is very low when you take these measurements as it is seen on the multimeter the resistivity is almost 0. When you say that resistivity is or resistance is very is 0 that means there is a very good electrical connection between these various points we talked about. So, in this case this anode at the bottom that will be able to protect both the horizontal both the rebars in perpendicular uh, directions. So, that is our idea it is not just to protect the rebar to which it is connected, but to protect the rebar mat or the entire rebar system. So, between all collection connections if the anodes are if, uh, if the anodes are show uh, sorry uh, yeah if the anodes are connected using the tie wires uh, very well well cleaned anode well cleaned uh, tie wire also should be cleaned and make sure that there is no rust on the tie wire because if if you buy the anode and after some time you connect it to, there are possibilities that uh, the tie wire also have uh, you know some corrosion so all that make sure that there is no rust at the time of uh, installation both on the steel and on the uh, anode. Now, if the resistance is less than 1 ohm we can say that it is very low uh, resistivity and then connection is very good. If it is uh, less than 1 millivolt potential difference then also we can say it is very good electrical connection between the uh, rebars and also good electrical connection between the anode and the uh, rebar. This becomes very important when you talk about very heavily corroded structure, because if it is a structure is heavily corroded and I am as I show uh, you know on with my finger. So, imagine there are two bars like this or uh, let us say talk about this uh, this region here, this region here on the top right. Imagine this both these rebars are heavily corroded, what will happen is the rust will get trapped in between the two rebars and you will not have a good connection. So, you may have to actually provide another tie wire in that case and clean the surface of the rebar and make sure that there is a good electrical connection between the uh, between all the reinforce uh, steel reinforcements. Very very important to ensure that the connectivity between the systems are very good then only all these galvanic anode systems will work. Now, this is an example where uh, I just got this image very recently. Uh, where it is about a 3 4 story building and you can see at the bottom of this uh, column and many of the columns in this line were actually having this corrosion at the bottom point and uh, this is a close up here you can see uh, the stirrups are getting corroded. Why? Because this column is actually absorbing or you know sucking all the water from the ground because of capillary action and the uh, reinforcement at the bottom is exposed to that moist environment through throughout the year you know except maybe whenever there is a possible you know moist environment it gets exposed to this and then it contains that concrete around works like a water sink and then the rate of corrosion is higher in this case as opposed to the other regions on the same column. So, how do we protect this because you know if one way is by injecting some chemicals into the bottom of the column where we work on the pore structure of the column and prevent the entry of uh, moisture from ground and at the same time if you can actually provide uh, cathodic protection we can stop the corrosion from happening and in this case maybe if the corrosion rate is high we know exactly where the anodes are placed 
and let us say after 20 years you take the anode and put a new anode in same place. So, this is something very uh, you know easy to do and uh, without really waiting for long term for this column to lose all its uh, capacity. So, by that time it will be too late. So, this is where we say cathodic prevention uh, technique becomes very important and less expensive than cathodic protection. Now, this uh, criteria on checking when you uh, install a cathodic protection system or install an anode, how do we check whether it is working or not. So, one widely used technique is this, <coughs> we look for shift in the potential. If that shift is greater than 100 millivolt in 24 hours, like you say here follow this graph. So, this is the E on that means uh, the potential when the anode is connected to the system and at this moment we disconnect the anode. Okay. So, we call immediately after that anode there will be a potential drop and so we call that instant off potential and then after that there will be a decay in the potential and we after 24 hours we check this potential. So, let us say here it is 24 hours time scale at the bottom. So, this is 24 hours time at that time if the potential is greater the difference is greater than 100 millivolt or the shift is greater than 100 millivolt then we say or in a shift means from here to here if it is greater than 100 millivolt then we say that the system is working very good okay and also instantaneous off potential if it is less than minus 820 millivolt uh, versus the uh, copper sulphate electrode then also it is good and then a uh, decay of 150 millivolt over an extended period of time. So, different techniques are have been worked on uh, because in some cases people also say you cannot measure on 24 hour basis you may have to go for longer period and then measure maybe 48 hours in some cases we have done in one of our project where we checked this at 48 hours and we could see that there is a uh, you know decay in the potential and then based on that we decide okay whether the anode is working or not. Now, these are the typical ranges of current demand which you can expect when you are talking about cathodic prevention or cathodic protection. You can very clearly see that in the case of cathodic prevention the current demand is less than 2 milliamp per centimeter per meter square whereas, in the case of cathodic protection there is a higher demand that means the rate of consumption of anodes will be higher in cathodic protection. So, it is always better to install the anode before the corrosion starts and so that there is no issues with electrical connectivity also. So, as we design the structures if we can provide the anodes at the critical locations where we expect corrosion we can also delay the onset of corrosion and you know really protect the structure for long time. Now, various types of anodes are available. I discussed this a briefly a little bit earlier, but let me uh, tell this once more. The uh, one type of anode performing significantly different than the other anode this the reason could the reason for this difference in performances are mainly the material of the anode the zinc itself uh, or the, uh, the metal itself. Uh, and the surrounding material or we call it activating motor or encapsulating motor different names, but essentially the idea of that motor is there are two roles for that motor around the anode. The two roles are one is because you have zinc metal, the zinc metal needs high pH typically 13 plus for it to corrode and the system to work the zinc has to corrode then only it can protect the steel. So, you have to have a motor which can always provide 13 plus pH uh, for the zinc that is one thing. Now, if the zinc is corroding what will happen this corroded zinc is going to, it, it has to occupy some space there is a little bit of expansion happening not like the steel rebar, but little bit expansion. So, where this zinc dust will go it has to actually uh, get into the uh, it has to get into the pores around. So, that the new surface which is exposed new surface of the zinc which is exposed also get the high pH environment. So, it is a very complex uh, system and uh, uh, you know you have to provide the high pH for the entire design life of the 
anode which could be about 20 years or 25 years. Okay. So, these are two different shapes whatever be it uh, we have to have a high pH environment for the entire design life of the anode. So, the activating motor should give should provide that for long term not for just few years from the installation, but for long term. So, that is where the difficulties in design comes and there are products available in the market which uh, actually meet those requirements and also the electrical connection between the anode and the rebar if they are not electrically connected then it is not uh, like just visual I am saying very make it very clear these are electrical connection connectivity is very important. Okay. So, that must be checked before you cover the, uh, the anode with mortar before covering uh, the anodes with mortar every single anode must be checked for electrical connectivity and that uh, or resistance value must be recorded. Otherwise, we cannot expect the system to work very well. If you do good care in doing all these things then definitely the structure will last for uh, you know as designed. Now, how do we select these different types of anodes which are available in the market? We do still uh, you know there are one some test methods available which are meant for ICCP system. So, taking the ideas from that we have actually uh, developed a short term test method uh, for uh, sacrificial anodes and we call it a gap test which is galvanic anode performance test. I thought this gap test sounds nice. So, uh, we are going to call this GAP or gap test. So, this is a short video which shows how the uh, test can be conducted and the significance of this test and what are the things which uh, by which uh, the uh, we can detect a particular anode is better than the other anode or whether it will be able to give uh, the desired life or extension of the life for the structure.